Hello, welcome back to Miss Finance. Mine is Rebecca, and on this channel, I go for all things accounting, finance, and investment related, as well as Excel related. So, if you like this kind of stuff, please do consider subscribing. And let's get straight into the video. Today, I'm going to cover a question around irrecoverable debt and bad debt. So, if you don't know what irrecoverable debt is, it's basically where a company's got debt that they need to write off. So, you might have had sales with a customer that you can't recover, so you need to write them off, and they call that irrecoverable debt. So, in this question, we've got a TB in front of us, so we need to go through and make these adjustments that we can see here. So, I'm going to box them off from one to seven. So, here we've got irrecoverable debt written off of £200. Now, if they're irrecoverable debts and they're not the allowance for doubtful debts, it just needs to go against the sales ledger control and also against irrecoverable debt in the profit and loss account. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find sales ledger control, otherwise known as the debtor's ledger control account. And I'm going to credit here and against irrecoverable debt, I'm going to put £200 in the income statement or the profit and loss statement. Now, the next allowance for doubtful debt is created. So what we need to do here is we've got an allowance for doubtful debts and an allowance for doubtful debts adjustment. So this one here is on the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. And this one here is in the P&L. So the difference between the two is that's almost like having a control account on the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. That one there hits the profit and loss account. So it's almost like a, having a suspense account for allowance for doubtful debts. So I'm going to pop up £350 here as a credit on my statement of financial position and £350 here in the profit and loss account. Next, we've been told fixtures and fittings accumulated depreciation has not been recorded. So I'm going to go ahead and find fixtures and fittings and I'm going to credit the accumulated depreciation account. So that will bring the net book value of the fixtures and fittings down by £3,000. And I'm going to find depreciation charges and put £3,000 there. Next, we've got closing inventory. So closing inventory, so usually this is shown as one line, but I've got it as two here. So if it goes to the income statement, then this is going to be a credit. So we want credit 11,000 and we want to debit 11,000 on the balance sheet because closing inventory is an asset on the balance sheet. And if you think of the, let me think, the cost of sales formula, you've got opening inventory, which is a positive you've got purchases, which is a positive, and then you always have less closing inventory, which is a negative. So you can see there that that's a negative, it's a credit. Now, machinery accumulated depreciation has not been recorded, so I'm going to go down, find machinery accumulated depreciation, put 4,500, and then I'm going to put 4,500 over here against depreciation. Next, we've got accruals relating to telephone costs have not been recorded, so telephone, 310 I'm going to debit that and accruals I'm going to credit because accruals are a liability so that's cost we've not yet received that we're putting into the profit and loss account so we're putting cost into basically the income statement to reduce our profit because it's something that we've used that we've not yet paid for now prepayments here we've got rent prepayment 256 so that's where we've put the cost already into the income statement or the profit and loss account and we want to strip them out because they don't relate to this period. So we're going to stick them onto the balance sheet. So if we find prepayments, 256, that then balances. Now over here, we've got whether this relates to the statement of profit and loss or the statement of financial position. Just made that a bit bigger. So opening inventory, like we said before, that's a positive. Purchases is going to be a debit as well. Sales revenue is going to be a credit. Admin expenses is going to be a debit. Wages a debit. Rent paid minus that is going to be a debit. Telephone plus that is going to be a debit. Interest paid is a debit. Travel expenses is a debit. And then here, it's going to highlight those in a different colour. Those are sitting on the statement of financial position, so just pop those on. So our accumulated depreciation is um, a negative, but our assets are a positive. So let's just bring all of those in there. Capital is a credit. Drawings is a debit. Loan from bank. Credit, credit, and credit. And then we've got our credit to the income statement. So let's just want to colour that. Debit inventory, credit accruals, debit prepayments, and again we've got another item there that needs to go into the PL. 
irrecoverable debt is in the P&L. That's on the balance sheet and then that's on the P&L. They're the profit or loss for the year. Right side, 26, So if you're unsure if that is a profit or a loss, you can do something really quickly to work it out. If we take the sales revenue and then we add up all of the costs and obviously less our closing inventory, you can see that uh, that we've got a profit of 22,896. So I hope you found this video useful. Do consider subscribing as always, and I shall see you on the next video.